Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to start uh, on a journey to help you to become a bit of an expert with C-sharp charts in Visual Studio. And we're talking about uh, Windows Forms applications. And if you're in the technical field, your engineering field, you're very aware of how important charts are in data gathering and data acquisition and analysis is in um, doing any sort of design work. Um, so these are very, very important for any technical uh, endeavor. So we're going to look at some of the um, important concepts behind these charts. And as you probably know, if you've worked with Microsoft Visual Studio, C Sharp, or any technical area really, terminology can be very, very challenging. It can be one of the most challenging um, hurdles to get to a point where you understand things. And certainly the case with Visual Studio and C Sharp. Um, they're really good on documentation, but not really good on conceptual understanding of what's going on. So there's a lot of terminology, but they don't really give you a visual depiction. So the, the goal here is to show you kind of what all these um, pr properties are and see what's going on. So you see what I did here is I made a simple Windows Forms application and again, I encourage you, if you're trying to figure out stuff like this, throw together a very simple demo application and try things out. So I've got all a bunch of different parameters associated with the chart in here. And I'm going to just run this so you can see what the different parameters are. And you can see I've got a slow moving um, chart. And it's basically taking a window of like the last 20 or so data points. And I'm generating those data points inside this application. And it's basically plotting each point. And this is using a spline graph, which is kind of a curve between each point. And if I want to look at the points, I can just select to add what's called markers. And now it's showing me the actual data points. And you can see it's putting a curved line between the data points. Or I can use a line graph, and it will put a straight line. But this is a curved line. So I can also uh, speed this up. So I've basically changed the timer to update this um, 10 times a second rather than twice a second. And you can see this is giving me a moving window. Or I can use a column chart. And you can see I can immediately change it to column. And it's also got this 3D uh, property where I can make a 3D chart. And what I can do is I can adjust the rotation of the chart. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. So I can adjust the rotation of the chart. And there's a thing called point depth, which is not really intuitive. But that can adjust the depth of the chart. And I can you do that also with a line chart. I can adjust the depth for whatever reason. And I can rotate it. And I can add markers. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. And it's really nice to be able to put it together a little application like we've got here and see what is actually going on and not just kind of wave your hands and think, oh, I know what that means. But in fact, um, it's not what you were thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the basic aspects of these charts and what they mean and how to access them so that this charting will be a whole lot easier. So here I am in a blank. Uh, C Sharp Windows Forms application. You see I've got my basic Form 1 here. And what I want to do is drag and drop a chart. So I go into the toolbox. I can search for C-H-A-R-T. And I can take this, drag, and drop it. And here I've got my basic Windows Forms chart. So now let's take a look at some of the specifics behind what all these um, different properties and methods are with these charts. OK, so here's our form. And I've drag and dropped a chart. I've changed some colors and stuff to make it a little bit easier to understand. But let's take a look at the different uh, naming conventions and what all this stuff means. So here's the chart that I drag and dropped. And it's kind of in yellow. Inside that, I've got another part of the chart. And that's called the chart area. And that's in blue. So I've got the chart. And then I've got a chart area inside of that. And you can see here this blue area, I've changed the back color, what's called the back color. So there's the chart, and then there's the area inside the chart. And the data that you're actually plotting in the chart is called a chart series. And you can see I've got a line chart here. 
And that is a plot of the data that you want to plot. Now, unfortunately called a series, not a data set or something else, but again, the terminology here can be kind of confusing. So you've got very important, you understand, you've got the chart, the main chart, then you've got a chart area inside of that, and the data that you're plotting is called a series. Now, keep in mind down here on the bottom something very, very, very important. If you look at the properties of the chart in Visual Studio, you will, you will see that different aspects of this chart can have multiple members. And you can see here, here are all the parts of the chart this big yellow box that can have multiple members and that's why they're collections. So you can have a collection of what's called annotations, chart areas, this blue area, you can have multiple chart areas, you can have a collection of chart areas. So it's not just this one blue area, you can have multiple areas. Then legends, you can have a collection of legends. Series, you can have a collection of series. Here we've got one series, one data set that's being plotted, but you can have multiple series and you can have multiple areas. And then you've got titles. You can have a collection of titles. So keep in mind that you can have many, many um, members of, of these chart areas and these series and these charts. So keep that in mind. So for example, here is my chart in yellow, the blue one, I've got a single chart area, but I've got two series inside that chart area. All right, so I've got chart series one and chart series two, and you can see one is a line chart, one is a column chart. So very important you understand the terminology, the series, the area, and the chart itself. Now, here I've got two chart areas and two chart series. So chart area one in blue has got this chart series one, chart area two, I have assigned the chart series to to that second chart area. Now I can I can move those series to either chart. I can put both of these on chart area one, but you can see that you can have multiples of all of these things. And I could have three chart areas and five chart series. We also need to keep in mind that each chart area has axes, right? So for example, chart area one has got a y-axis defined by these numbers here, and chart area one has got an x-axis defined by these numbers here. Chart area two has got a separate y-axis and it's got different numbers, and chart area two has a separate x-axis. Each chart area has its own axes that you can specify. There is also what's called a secondary axis. So for example, this chart area has got a primary axis here on the left. And I, since I've got two chart series, I can assign one series to this y-axis and the other series to a second y-axis, okay? And that's shown over here on the right. So again, I can have one chart area can have multiple series and each chart area can have multiple axes. So there's a primary on the left and a secondary on the right. And you can see that the axis is a property of the area, right? Because I've got, each area has got separate axes. So if you want to adjust the axes, you have to look at the area and you have to see which area you want to modify. And that area has got its own axis. So that, um, relationship, you can view it as kind of a hierarchy. So you've got a chart which has chart areas as children and each child has got properties of axes and whatever. So keep that all in mind. Each chart area also has these major and minor grids. So um, I have set this up so that the x-axis has major grids and I've put those in a solid black color and that chart area on the x-axis also has minor grids and I've put semi-opaque dashed lines to show that the minor grid. So again, this chart has one area and that one area has one series and that one area also has primary and secondary y-axis. It has a primary x-axis and the x-axis has properties of major and minor grids, all right? So that hierarchy is very important.
we said down here you can have a collection of legends. So here I've got a chart with two chart areas and one legend. And that is the legend that defines um, each of the series. It gives a name to each series. But again, I can have multiple legends. So here I've added a second legend. So I can have chart areas, legends, and series. We're not going to talk about annotations and titles. Those are pretty straightforward, but the concept is the same. Now, as I said before, this hierarchy and these collections are very important to get in your head because if you want to look at a certain property, you need to keep in mind, is that a property of the chart or the area or the series? So it can get kind of confusing. So, for example, we take all these collections. You see you've got a single chart and it's got areas and it also has series and it also has legends, okay? And an area has axes, as we've shown. A series has points, which are the, the actual data in the series, and we've got legends. Now, as we said before, you can take a series and assign it to an area, and you can also assign it to an axis. So for example, if we have two series, one can be the primary axis and one can be the secondary axis and you can assign a series to legends. So you need to keep in mind these hierarchies and how they're related. So for example, here again, we've got two areas. Um, we've got one legend. We've got this series associated with this area and this series one associated with this area. And we've got different axes. Now setting these, um, one of the challenges is there's a lot of flexibility in Visual Studio for setting all these properties. And one of the confusing things is there are multiple ways to do it. So for example, say I've got this chart and I want to adjust the axes or I want to adjust the series. There's a couple ways I can do it. I can use the properties panel where each of these different members and properties, you can see up here members and properties, each of these can be adjusted in the properties panel or down here I can do it in code. So for each of these properties, there is an equivalent statement in C sharp that you can use to address that property and change it. So you've got some choices. Uh, you may want to do it in the properties panel or you may want to do it in the code panel. Um, there's pros and cons to each depending on what you need. But just keep in mind, there's an equivalent C sharp code for each of these properties. And you can see um, I've got a area selected and it's got a member of this series and I can add a series or remove a series and I can set the properties of that series. Again, or I can use a C sharp line of code that says chart one series chart type and I can set it to series chart type dot line or I can go up here to chart type dot line. Now, in, the, in, in Visual Studio and Windows Forms, um, if, you go, if you select a chart and go to the properties, you can see there's these, um, you can expand or contract each of these and you can see you can adjust the accessibility, the appearance, behavior, the chart itself, the data, design focus. So this is really nice that you can uh, quickly jump to the different properties just by going to these um, different categories. Um, if you're doing it in code, it's a little bit more difficult trying to figure out what the actual code is. So now one thing uh, I want you to keep in mind, when you're doing anything in the technical world, and this is no different when you're working with Microsoft Visual Studio, C Sharp, uh, anything technical, it's really good if you can simulate or reproduce things yourself um, it helps a lot to figure out what's going on. And here's a great example. Let's say I've got this chart and I've got my series plotted and it's a line chart. So I've got a line between the points and you look at it and you say, well, I want that to be a thicker line. Well, you might think, well, I just go to the series properties and go to line thickness. There's got to be a line thickness parameter and just set that. Well, no, unfortunately, um, one of the many confusing things about this uh, Windows Forms and C Sharp and Visual Studio 
is it's not called thickness. And in fact, after a lot of research, you might find out that it's actually called a series border width. Now, clearly, nobody is going to initially think that the line thickness is called border width. But unfortunately, that's the way it is in uh, Visual Studio and many other technical areas. So when you look at the documentation, um, Microsoft has tons of documentation, unfortunately, in many cases is like this. So you might say, well, what is border width property? Well, here's the documentation. You go down here. The border width property of a series is an integer value that specifies the border width of the data point. So after hitting your head against the wall, you just have to accept the fact that they call thickness, line thickness, or, or point size as border width, all right? So one of the great ways to figure these things out is to actually set up an application. So here I've got the application I showed in the intro of this. And this, the purpose of the application is just to see how the different parameters cause the chart to respond. And I've added one that's called border width. And you can see as I increase the border width, it increases the thickness of the line or the spline chart. So really, this is a great opportunity to figure out, you know, what all these different things do. And you can see the border width also affects with a column. It affects the border around the columns. So um, to erase all doubt, I encourage you to um, go through and in any technical application, develop a kind of a demo and try things out and see how they work. So now in the next videos, we're going to look at putting together a simple uh, application with a chart. Uh, we're going to look at accessing data, things like data binding, which is very important. And then we're also going to look at making this a lot simpler by making a simple library. Anytime you want to use a chart, instead of having to go through and do all these settings, Maybe you can set up a standard format, a standard class, and uh, make it a lot easier next time you want to do a chart. So I encourage you, if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, and subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some more viewers. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.